I want to get to know you better. One of my big goals for 2024 is to slightly change the direction of this show to make it more relevant to you, the listener. And while the goal and topics have changed for this show many times over the 400 plus episodes, I want to take a moment to learn a little bit more about you so that I can better tailor the content to help you win and achieve your goals. So if you would be so kind as to head over to howibuilt.it slash survey, I have just a few short questions for you, and that will help me plan out the rest of 2024. Again, that's over at howibuilt.it slash survey. Thanks so much. 2023 was a wild year for social media. Twitter turned into X. Meta launched threads. And LinkedIn started off the year as a promising platform for engagement and growth before tweaking the algorithm and tanking all of that. Matt Clark, founder of The Virtual Edge, host of The Rainmaker Show, and expert in sales, argues that we shouldn't treat LinkedIn like a social media platform because it's not one. It's a professional networking platform. That means we need to treat it more like a networking event if we want to make the most of it. And today, he's going to tell us how. Look for these top takeaways. LinkedIn wants you to be intentional. That means you need to know who you're talking to and how you can help them. Make sure your profile is optimized towards your client. Do some research to figure out their biggest problem and how you can fix it for them. And if you don't know where to start, run a poll. This will re-engage your connections. Ask three to four questions that are targeted to your ideal client. Then, when people do engage, follow up and ask to get on a quick call. This was a really great conversation, and in fact, there is a pre- and post-show for members where we talk about even more stuff like oversimplification of things that you see on social media. I personally think that people like Justin Welsh and Alex Hormozzi oversimplify how to make a lot of money. We also talk about guest posting and things like that or podcast guesting. So it's a really good conversation. If you want to get ad-free extended versions of this conversation, as well as additional newsletters and articles for members only, you can head over to howibuilt.it slash join. I'm now on Substack, so you can join there. Or if you listen in Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe to the show directly in Apple Podcasts. All in all, this is a great conversation. You can find all the show notes over at howibuilt.it slash 401. But for now, let's get into the intro and then the interview. Hey, everybody, and welcome to How I Built It, the podcast that helps busy solopreneurs and creators grow their business without spending too much time on it. I'm your host, Joe Casabona, and each week I bring you interviews and case studies on how to build a better business through smarter processes, time management, and effective content creation. It's like getting free coaching calls from successful solopreneurs. By the end of each episode, you'll have one to three takeaways you can implement today to stop spending time in your business and more time on your business or with your friends, your family, reading, or however you choose to spend your free time. All right, I'm here with Matt Clark, the founder of The Virtual Edge and a TV show host of The Rainmaker Show, which I didn't say this in the pre-show, but we're definitely going to talk about that at some point. Uh, and I'm, I'm just awesome. going <laughs> to dive right into this. Um, what are LinkedIn's best practices? Awesome. So, you know, LinkedIn's best practices, and this is the interesting thing, is they give you such a vague set of rules, right? Where they're like, optimize your LinkedIn profile. And I, I wrote the list down here. So I'm going to go like just through some of them. Like optimize your LinkedIn profile. They like pinpoint your target audience, create content that helps solve your audience problems, 
Um, you know, the engage with your followers. I'm like, okay, great. You know, make use of analytics. Um, you know, have a business page set up, experiment with photos and videos, use data to find your best time to post, uh, post consistently, right? Just there, uh, <laughs> help your colleagues help you, which was an interesting one. Um, that, Very, that we saw. Jerry Maguire, right? Help me help you. Right? Very Jerry Maguire, a hundred percent. Um, very, very much so. Let me help you. Help me help you, <laughs> right? And so when, when you start peeling back the layers, then it goes deeper and deeper. So, you know, uh, as we were talking about earlier, you know, they have this uh, algorithm update. And then you go from being able to message 100 people in a day down to 20, mm -hmm. right? So they do like some really weird things that don't really make sense because their goal, and I kind of get it too in the bigger scheme of things, but it doesn't make sense as a business growth tool in the parameters of best practices. And so their goal is that, you know, they are not a, and if we frame this right, it's like everyone bundles LinkedIn as a social media platform. It's not. It is a professional networking platform, right? And so, you know, if you are thinking about, I mean, we've, you've been to networking events, right? Business networking events. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just was that one last so week, actually. We, <laughs> yeah, amazing, yeah, yeah. right? I, I can't even remember the last time I went to one because <laughs> we travel so much. <laughs> we just do everything online, yeah. you know? Yeah. But you think about those bigger business networking events, you've got three kinds of people. The first person is the one that goes out and hands a business card out to every single person in the room, right? Yeah. And then you walk past the trash can on the way out and you see the trash can stacked with <laughs> that person's business. They've just wasted all this money on printing business cards. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The second kind of person is the one that is, that goes and, you know, looks at, um, is very intentional or sits, sits very quietly in the corner and doesn't talk to anyone, the introvert. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the third one is the one who's very intentional about who they talk to. Okay. And that's actually who we want to be is, and this is what LinkedIn is trying to get you to do. And yes, it works, but they also are not big fans of automation. They're not big fans of having somebody else run your profile. So these are some of their best practices. You need to do everything. You need to dedicate an hour to two hours a day doing this, post consistently, read the analytics. I'm like, you know, my business has got so many moving parts and I'm sure your business has got so many moving parts. Like as, as small business owners, we've got a lot of moving parts. And generally as the business owner, we're responsible for a lot of those moving parts. So how on earth am I going to dedicate all my time in one place ticking off all of these little boxes, yeah. hoping that it's going to generate something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, this, what you're saying is great. It really drives home something similar that uh, a guest from last year said, uh, Kathleen Selmans, about LinkedIn's not a social network. So I love that you're reinforcing that because, you know, you see people posting the same things that they would post on X or whatever they're posting on now. And it's like, um, you know, last year I made $500,000. Here's my top five tips to make 500. And I'm like, what, who, who is this? Like, who's going to make you reach out? Imagine going to a networking event and just walking uh -huh. up to somebody and saying that, right? Like they'd walk away from you. <laughs> it's so, insane. Yeah. Like it, you might as well give them your business card and hope for the best. Just right. print it on a business card and give it to them. Right. You'd probably get better success. Yeah. So I love that you're saying that. Something else I thought that was funny that you said, like in the list of best practices was like experiment with photo and video. And I'm like, how can, I, how can an experiment <laughs> also be like a best practice? I like, shouldn't exactly. you know what the best practice is at, like through experimentation? So I, I just keyed in on that. I thought that was really funny. And they'll give you, so they'll give you and they'll say, all right, so you've got to, you've got to test out between, you know, text and video and um, images, still mm -hmm. images, and then also test out combining those. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, okay, that's cool. Um, it's very general. So all their best practices come through is like very general. Yeah. And you know, the question that I always ask, and because we deal with, like our clients are B2B focused and their clients are generally other businesses or they're trying to talk to CEOs or upper level management or, you know, decision makers or other small business owners. So I'm like, if I've got limited amount of time in a day, where am I going to experiment? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. I. Otherwise. Phew. 
Yeah, right. You're you're not the scientist, right? And like, don't get me wrong. Exactly. I want my. We talked about like stacking boxes and what do you want from your business and, and things like that. I would yes. love nothing more to just like create content and experiment like that. I love that, right? I'm like a very, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like very like academically focused, and I love trying things. Um, but the truth of the matter is that I'm experimenting. Kind like on low stakes things at first, right? Like I'm not exactly. gonna experiment on my funnel because if an yeah. experiment fails, then I'm not making money in six months or, or three months or whatever. Hundred percent. Yeah. And let's be honest, anything that is not proven or anything new is an experiment. Right. Yes. Right? And I think this is this is actually a really good uh, a really good uh, thing to talk about is that most people are going out there and they're trying new stuff in the hope that it'll work and changing their business model or their message or their offer and not actually treating it as an experiment. Mm -hmm. Right. And I see this happen so many times where it's like, you know, people come in and then they sign up for a coaching course or mentoring course or whatever it is. And then the person is like, okay, you should do this. And then they say, okay, cool. They go and do this and it doesn't work. And then you wonder why it doesn't work. And we've been guilty of that too. Like I'll say one thing for us, right? We're really good at implementing stuff. Mm -hmm. And we've signed up for courses before and they're like, oh yeah, you should do this. And we're like, okay, let's dive into this a little bit. Dive into this. Okay, cool. It kind of makes sense. Go in that direction. And then you look back a year later and you're like, why aren't things working the way or as smoothly as we want? Why have we not grown? And then we look back and we're like, oh, it's because we stopped doing the things that were working and we focused <laughs> on this new shiny object. Yes. Right? We literally did this with, um, so one of the things that we love doing on LinkedIn is uh, running events, mm -hmm. right? So set up an event, invite people to an event because there's such cool strategies around that. So last year, I mean, we added over a million dollars to our business running two webinars a month, right? Wow. Driving all the traffic from LinkedIn. We did a combination of direct outreach. There's a strategy around how you get people to the events and how you get them to, in these four phases, sh uh, sign up, show up, pay up, and follow up. Mm. Um, and then also running ads, right? Yeah. And, you know, we saw 7.2 times return on ad spend. And uh, it's just... It's amazing. Yeah, that's that's great. Now, I want to I want to touch on something here too because I like the um, anything not proven is an experiment. Um, yes, you have you have a lot of coaches who just like do things once and then they're like this is, this must be how it works for everybody, right? Like that drives me. There's there are especially in the podcasting space now because it's so new. There's like mm -hmm. lots of charlatans um, who are yep. like, yeah, oh, you need to release five episodes on day one. Why are you saying that? Like, like, yeah. what's the well? Because you get five downloads instead of one download. Okay, is downloads the metric? Yes. No. Oh, no, it's not because that changes. That just changed. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, the thing that you need to to also remember with experiments is that they're usually based on some axioms, right? Some some mm -hmm. immutable truths. And if, yeah. if you run an experiment, even if it's a good experiment that worked for the coach or the creator, or whoever, the course creator, um, if you don't have your audience down, if you don't have the right channel down, you can run that experiment exactly. and it can still fail. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, you know, to, to add on to that, one of the biggest realizations that we had, and, you know, I mean, we've spent over $200,000 in our own education, uh, you know, over the years, and one thing that we realized that like kind of slapped us in the face was that how we get clients is also different to how our clients get clients. Mm. So it's the same thing. It's like if you're looking for a, a, a coach or someone to guide you or, you know, a mentor or whatever, or a system or a methodology, you've got to look at they're selling to you. But who are they selling? You know, who is their audience right. versus who is your audience? And if your goal is to help your clients get results, then will that strategy work for them as well? Yeah. So you've got to look at the whole ecosystem and not just, oh, yeah, I made $500,000 in 30 seconds by, you know, with an ebook. Um, you've got to look at, does this make sense? Is this how my audience will react? Will they read it? Will they care right. about it? You know, there's there's all of those things. And then you still even look at them. And then you go into the metrics as well. So it's like before you can even go into metrics, like, does this even make sense? Yeah. 
Yes, that's I love I to to put this uh really concretely, right? I market mm-hmm. to podcasters. But if the yep. people I'm coaching, like the people who who have a podcast, or let's say I market to solopreneurs, right? Um through my podcast, I know they listen to podcasts. If their yes. audience is on TikTok exclusively, I'm not going to tell them to start a podcast, right? Like this is the classic like it works for me so it'll work for you. Um, and I think this is the differentiator for like a good business person or a good coach versus a bad one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, my friend Chris Lemma is an amazing coach and he is an amazing coach because he has been involved in multiple different businesses over 20, 30 years, right? Uh, and and a few months ago, I was interacting with somebody who's like, oh, how long have you been? Po-? Like, I'm a podcast coach too. How long have you been podcasting? And I'm like, I've been podcasting for 12 years. What about you? Oh, I've been podcasting since April. And I'm like, so less than a year. <laughs> like, you can't really be a coach. a coach. Right, yeah, right. That would be mm-hmm. that would be like my son who's playing T ball saying, Oh, I'm a bit I'm a I'm a hitting coach now. Like Yeah. So a hundred percent. You know, it, and, and it's it's so interesting because we also see this all the time, and especially in, in this space too. And I'm sure you see it in the podcast space, because I get a lot of stuff about podcasting and start your podcast yeah. and all the rest, is in the, the B2B lead generation space, right? My Facebook feed is every single ad that pops up on there is, hey, are you a coach, consultant, or agency owner? You know, and whatever the rest of the message is, yeah. I don't really care. I just scroll straight past it. Yeah. But if we, we've got to look at like our clients are marketing to CEOs of large organizations a lot of the time, right? They, they're trying to reach the leadership team. Okay, marketing to small business owners, that's easy. We've got tons of stuff, you know, that's easy, plug and play. And you can do that in more bulk. If you're going after a CEO of a large organization, I mean, some of my, some of our clients, you know, the, the clients that they're working with, they're, the companies they're trying to reach out are doing hundreds of millions of dollars, if not in billions. Yeah. Right? Wow. Yeah. It's not the same strategy. It's a very different strategy, very different approach. Like we had this uh, one client where, you know, they didn't need a lot of business. But their target audience, they, the, the one company they were trying to get into was Saudi Aramco, right? Big oil company in the Middle East. Now, if we have to say, okay, cool, build a lead magnet and get a lead magnet in front of them, then no one's going to care. R- right, right. Yeah. Right? Put a funnel together, you know, market on Facebook. They're not going to care. So you need a different approach. And when we look at this, it's like, all right, it's not just that there's a one-size-fits-all approach. It's like, okay, if we're going out after B2B leads – who are we looking at? What level are we playing at? And then you've got to have the right strategy that aligns to that kind of client that you're looking for. Yeah, this and this is so cru- like this is so crucial because again, last year there was a turning point in my business, right? In 2022, mm. my marketing was make your first ten thousand dollars with your podcast. I thought that was got great. It. Lots of people I talked to wanted to make money, and then I had a conversation with my friend Justin Moore, and he said. <laughs> The businesses who have like the money who can pay you the real dollars they're do not, not care. care. He's like, they're spending $10,000 on their podcast or they're spending $10,000 a month on their podcast. He's like, so what's a better value proposition? And I'm like, oh, right. Um, mm-hmm. And that was like a huge turning point for me because like at the end of 2023, I started getting more clients and, and more people saying like, hey, yeah. I need your help to improve my processes so my employees aren't wasting their time. On our podcast. And better quality people that spend more money with you. Right. Yeah. Right. And get bigger results. Yes, exactly. So and so, easier to work with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too, right? Just go do your thing versus like, hey, uh, hey, I'm paying you a whole hundred dollars. Like, what are you doing for me? Can I call you at four in the morning? Exactly. No, you can't. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um I love 100%. that. So okay, so we covered, I mean, we covered a lot of things here in Act One. Um all the all the druthers, right, of of LinkedIn best practices. So um, we're going to take a quick break for our sponsors. And then in Act 2, we're going to look at the, the maybe the immediate and long-term ramifications of just blindly following those best practices. So I think we got a little taste awesome. here in Act 1. After the break, we'll come back with Act 2. Look, when you have an online-based business, speed and reliability are the most important aspects of a service. Not far behind that is actually owning the website that your business relies on. 
When you own your website, you're not subject to an algorithm, changing terms, or accidental shutdowns. That's why I'm so excited that Liquid Web is back as a sponsor of How I Built It this year. Their cloud VPS is some of the best in-class hosting you can get when your business relies on your website. From speed to security and protection to regular backups, with Liquid Web, you can trust your website will remain in tip-top shape. Not technically savvy? Don't worry. Liquid Web offers fully managed hosting, which means they have a team of knowledgeable experts looking after your website for you so you can focus on running your business. If you need fast, reliable, and secure hosting for your business, check out Liquid Web. Head over to howibuilt.it slash liquidweb today. Hey there. One of my goals in life is to help busy solopreneurs and creators like yourself win back your time and spend less time in your business. It took three kids and a global pandemic for me to understand the power of using my time wisely. And I want to make sure that you don't need to go through the same thing I went through. That's why I want to tell you about my membership. If you want more insights into how creators build their businesses, more automation tutorials and templates, and even more great content, you should become a member. You'll get ad-free extended versions of this podcast, access to my automations library, my Friday members-only newsletter called The Automated Solopreneur, live stream archives, and more. All of that for less than two cups of coffee from Starbucks. So if you want to win back your time and get even more insights into how creators build their business, head on over to casabona.org slash join and sign up today. You won't regret it. All right. And we're back. So uh, before the break, we were talking about uh, LinkedIn's best practices, how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. I meant to clarify, we kept saying they, who is they? Is it LinkedIn or is it like LinkedIn, like quote unquote influencers who are telling you these best practices? So LinkedIn uh, and the influencers and it's pretty yeah. much, it's a blanket thing. Yeah. When you, LinkedIn say, when and then the people Link- who read what LinkedIn says and, and tells you what they say. And make their own stuff, yeah. yeah. And, and LinkedIn kind of goes, they, they go very broad and they go very generic. So they'll say, optimize your profile and then they'll say, put up recommendations, put up this, put up this. And you're like, well, obviously those are the fields you need to fill out on <laughs> when you're setting up your profile right. anyway. This is so the I'm, onboarding process. So what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like the obvious stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. And like, you know, test with text or video or, 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 or uh, you know, an image. And you're like, like, what else am I going to do? Right, yeah. And to drive this point home again, not, not, you know, I don't want to pick on, I don't want to pick on grifters, but I want to pick on grifters, right? Um, there was... <laughs> You know, I saw a post that was like, here's your social media strategy for 2024. Three posts on threads, four posts on Twitter, three posts on LinkedIn with one carousel. And I'm like, mm-hmm. one carousel with a link. And I'm like, isn't LinkedIn getting rid of some of these things that you mentioned? Like on like in December, they got rid of, I think, like images with a link or carousels with a link or the ability to upload carousels explicitly or something like that. And I'm just like, why, right? Like, what? Mm-hmm. why is this your strategy? What are you posting? Like, should I put, just post pictures of my kids on LinkedIn? Like, are people going to care about that, yeah. right? Or like the... I think... Yeah. And I think it also depends on, you know, who you are and what your brand is, right? right? Because if you're starting out, if you're a bit more in the beginning stages, you want to be focusing on quality over quantity, mm. right? So you want to be making... Re- you want to be really intentional, you know, uh, I, was, I was actually, I was on a, a podcast yesterday talking about, you know, being intentional about how do you grow it? Because uh, it's an interesting thing, you know, when I ask people and, you know, I was, uh, I was presenting to one of my buddies audiences the other day, they had like 1500 people on. So I love asking these questions wow. here specifically. Yeah. First question is, how many people do you have on your LinkedIn profile? Right. And range of answers from whatever. The second question is, what percentage of those people our ideal clients or have those ideal clients as part of their network. Now, for most of the people that respond, it's somewhere between one and 10%. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Which means that, and we think about this, right? 
Now, LinkedIn is saying, okay, grow your connections, get to 5,000 connections, post lots of content. But if only 10% of the people actually care about what you have to say, your content's not going to get shared. Right. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. Right. So, you know, we look at it and it's like, if we want to be intentional, right? And some people are very intentional where they're like, yeah, 70%, 50% and above is intentional. But if it's less than that, then you've got to actually go in and start deleting people. Delete anyone that is not an ideal client or that is not, that doesn't have your ideal client as part of their network. Right. And it could be the same for uh, employees or it could be the same for, you know, finding suppliers or finding services, whatever it is. Anything that is not relevant to your business, get rid of it. Then you'll see your content start going, you know, start re reaching more people. And even then it's quality over quantity. You don't have to post three to five times a day. Right. So just to circle back to that, if you're starting out, post content, be intentional, connect intentionally with people. But we've got some clients that have got a massive brand. You know, they've got tens of thousands of people that, that are following them. In which case, then it's about your brand, right? Then you can post more often because you've got people that are already interested in what you have to say and they want more from you. Yeah, I think this is a really important distinction to make here, right? And exactly, this is probably like not making that distinction as part of why just a blind strategy can be harmful, right? Because... Joe, the solopreneur podcast coach, right? Who, by the way, does post pictures of his kids sometimes because my target audience is busy solopreneur parents. Um, Fits. Right. Like I can help those people the best. Um, I'm not just like posting updates, right? Like hit, hit 500,000 um, uh, downloads yeah. today on Transistor, right? Like that's, that doesn't help people uh, like I might think it helps me establish my authority but people aren't thinking good for you they're thinking like well help help me do that tell me how you can help me do that um mm -hmm. but a brand right it's like oh we just released this new thing or like our holiday coke cans are out like check them out right I guess this is coca-cola specifically <laughs> yeah 100 <laughs> percent. not a sponsor uh, yeah we're gonna make that distinction there you know <laughs> Um, and then there's even, you know, there's even somewhere in between as well, because we also deal with organizations that have got salespeople, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So there's the solopreneurs who are the ones who are responsible for everything. Then we've got organizations who've got salespeople. So, I mean, uh, the one company that we worked with sent us 15 of their salespeople, okay? Both setters and closers. And what we did was, you know, you've got to be leveraging the company brand as well. But as a salesperson inside an organization, it's all about how do you help? It's not about trying to sell the company. It's not about trying to sell your services. It's about helping people achieve a very specific outcome. Yeah. And like, I'll give you an example of this, right? Is one of the clients that we worked with is an immigration consulting company uh, based in South Africa. And they have, uh, they sent me 10 of their salespeople and I went and sat down with them and we came up with their personal profiles and their brand. We made it uniform to the company, but each person had their own unique angle on it. And the overall message that we came up with was helping ideal client. And I'll come back to that in a moment to, uh, immigrate to a first world country within 12 months. Okay, really specific. Yeah, I love that. Then what we did was we took each one of their salespeople and we targeted a different industry. So one would be focusing on uh, doctors. One would be focusing on teachers. One would be focusing on business owners. One would be focusing, you know, going through all those professions that they were looking for. You know what happened? They tripled their sales in the first month of working together. Tripled. Like uh, there's a video on my website that where the guy's like, okay, uh, I went and worked with them over a weekend to do it. They're like, okay, this was the week before Matt came. And then Matt came on this weekend. He has the numbers afterwards and they triple. Wow. That's amazing. That, it's insane. Yeah. And and it's so funny because I, again, I tell the same thing to my clients about their pod, like your podcast needs a mission statement, right? Like, who do you help and how do you help them, right? What mm -hmm. problem are you solving and how do you help them solve that problem? Like, that's such a yes. crucial question to answer. Agreed. Because I think, you know, I made this mistake. I've been uh, freelancing or in my in business uh, since 14, right? And like, I made websites yeah. for my parents' friends. I was just like, yeah, anybody who needs a website, I'll just help those people, right? 
And so, and like, then you, who do you get? Do you get anybody? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Like, I I met like the this woman in the waiting room of a hospital. My friend had pneumonia, and so like I was just, and she's like, uh, she's like, oh, you make websites? I need a website for my new business. And I'm like, cool. And we like exchange. And she's like, so how much would it cost? Uh, like via email after. And I said, oh, it'll probably cost like, you know, whatever, like $3,000, $5,000 or whatever. She's like, I thought you said you charge $75. And I said, I charge $75 an hour. <laughs> I was like 20 yeah. at the time. So like that was like pretty good. Um, yeah. And uh, she's like, oh, well, my nephew can do it for free. And I was like, well, first of all, everybody has a nephew who can do it for free. Um, I said, okay, uh, well, I'm never going to be able to compete with free. So if, yeah. if, if you ever change your mind, let me know. Lo and behold, like a yeah. year later, she's like, my nephew did my website and uh, it's a disaster. And I'm like, now I charge $200 an hour. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. And, you, you know, this is actually, this is a really good point because it kind of brings us into some of the best practices uh, on setting up your profile, right? Yeah. And specifically for LinkedIn. And, you know, I love I love getting this piece dialed in because how you position yourself on, you know, Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is, is very different to how you position yourself on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. right? So because we're networking, what we want to do is we want to be calling out that ideal client. So, you know, choose one. We call this the power of one, okay? Even if you can help 10 different industries or 10 different kinds of people, let's solve one ideal, one big problem for one ideal client, Okay. And we use that as your headline, or we call it the pickup line, right? Because it's yeah. there to open up conversations. We're not trying to sell everything that we're doing all at the same time. It's like, here's one big problem that we solve for this ideal client, and then it leads into the next steps, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we, you know, we had, that, we had the conversation in the beginning. I'm like, people come to us for three reasons, to have massive impact in their marketplace, to uh, have sustainable growth and build a business that gives them lifestyle. Yes. Right. But our initial message to people is get five to 10 high quality sales meetings every single week using LinkedIn automation and AI. Interesting. That's why they come to us. Right. That's yeah. the first message they see. They're like, oh, yeah, this looks interesting. Right, let's open up a conversation. And then we start the journey of the next and figure out, OK, why aren't you getting this? What's going on? What are the pieces that are missing? Because, you know, your LinkedIn profile, the headline or the pickup line needs to be, it's a, it's a conversation starter. It's an opener, right? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. We're not trying to tell everyone everything that we do. Right. Then your about section needs to talk about the biggest pain points that they've got and then show them how you get them from pain to where they want to get to. And you've got a system with proven results to be able to do that, right? So we look at the LinkedIn profile page as it needs to be a landing page. It's not a CV. Most people position themselves as a CV. This is who I am. This is how great I am. Here's all my accolades, blah, blah, blah. We want to make it all about the client. Hey, dude, if you're in this place, you're trying to get to here. These are the common pitfalls. This is how we solve it. Here's the system and here's the outcomes. And then we even put up case studies. We put up testimonials. You know, there's, we've got a 10 point checklist of things that you need to have for your, uh, for your, for your profile but that's structured in a certain way to focus everything on your client-centric sales page. One of my um, not-so-secret superpowers is analogy. I'm, <laughs> I'm told I'm very good at this. And so I'm formulating a new one as you're talking, right? Because I think a lot of people view the sales process, right? Or the getting new clients process as a, a boxing match, right? Where yeah. you can go for the knockout, on the first punch, right? Like it doesn't, there's no set time, right? But it's really more like a baseball game. You're going to mm -hmm. play a minimum of nine innings. You need to start mm -hmm. strong. You need to make it through this, this middle where you're playing the, I'm, I'm not going to say mind games, but you're, you're strategically working against an opponent or you're strategically yeah. working with a potential client. And then you have the closer come in and close out the game, Right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I think I think a lot and about baseball. My my members are probably or my listeners are probably really tired of hearing me talk about baseball. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because you, you like the numbers and the stats and yeah, and that, how the game that is exactly yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, I mean that's baseball. It's a numbers and stats game, and yeah. you know, it's actually it's actually because people don't respect the sales process. 
mm-hmm. right? They're going in and exactly like you said, if we want to stick with the baseball analogies, they're going in and trying to hit a home run off every single ball that comes in, mm-hmm. right? Where if, what if the strategy doesn't require a home run? The strategy requires to get to first base. Yeah. Yes. Like that's it. And then get to the next base, get to the next base, fill those bases, bring in the closer that can hit the home run and then boom, four runs. Yeah. Done. Yeah, that's exactly but right. People don't respect the sales process. And it's like, okay, let's reach out. Let's just, you know, spam the hell out of people. Uh, let's throw spaghetti against the wall. So, you know, I like to say this. It's like people aren't just throwing spaghetti against the wall, but they're also throwing the sauce and the meatballs <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. You know, so yeah. like the whole part of everything is just boom, hoping and, something sticks and all you left with is a mess. And as an Italian, that upsets me deeply. Like, <laughs> that's a waste of good spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, it's like if, if I'm yeah. throwing a piece of spaghetti on the wall, it's sticking the first time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, yeah, I got it. Sorry. For those uh, yes. members can see the video, but I got the, you know, I got the hands. I can't help it. I got the hands going. Um <laughs> so um that's great. I I love this. Uh people don't respect the sales process. But also like the the positioning, right? Again, you made this this mm. um that's dis- part of the process. Yes. And you made this distinction again between other so- like social media and LinkedIn which is not social media, right? Yeah. I think that's really important. I think that's like the the thread that's been throughout this entire episode. So. Absolutely. And and it's like, you know, if you think about, if you go to a networking event and you make a great connection, and if we just use like a, a typical thing, because every business owner has been to a networking event at, at some stage in their life, right? Yeah. And if you make a good connection and, you know, I heard this, you know, and you probably heard this saying before, you know, it just takes one good connection, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But generally that one good connection, that could come off in a year's time. Yeah. Right. What do you do in that year? Do you make that one good connection and then try to hit them with everything that you've got and they say no and that's it? Right. Or do you build up the relationship? Right. Yeah. Right. So that's what we got to do. And it's like, if we, what we want to do with the LinkedIn profile is actually shorten the time between opening the relationship and becoming a client. Mm. Okay. So you have your sales process, you respect the sales process, but you can also shorten the time frame that that sales process takes. I like that. I like that. Because I think, I think that there's, there's wisdom in that because mm. you, like you said, people don't respect the sales process. They go in, they DM, they're like, oh, I'm going to get a client. If I send 20 DMs, I'm going to get one client. Like, no, you're not. You're not. Everybody who says like, hey, I can get you more listens on iTunes. I'm like, first of all, it's not called iTunes anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you've already cut against your authority. Mm-hmm. Or hey, I can, can I edit an episode for you for free? I'm like, I have. If you know anything about me, you'll know that like my editor is a crucial part of my process that I help people with. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then there's the other side where like, to your point, I went to a conference in June of, of 21. June 22. Um, and like come May 23, somebody I met at that conference was ready to hire me, right? Uh, yeah. To help them. Um, and that's a really long lead time. And so like shortening that lead time is would be good. I mean, especially for businesses who don't have, uh, who are trying to build up more of a runway, right? Because there certainly Absolutely. are. Like, Apple has like a 400 year runway, right? They can just like bleed money. Yeah. But you know, small business owners like myself. Yeah, that yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if we if we even just look at the buying cycle, maybe not the buying cycle, but you know, where people are in the buying process, only one to three percent of people are going to be ready to buy right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Doesn't mean they're ready to buy from you. They're just at a stage where they're like, okay, they're they're problem, they're 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 solution aware. They know there's a solution out there, they're looking for the right solution. Yeah. Right. Then you're going to have 25% of people, 25 to 27% of people that are problem aware. So I know I've got a problem. I am stuck with this thing. I haven't maybe quite looked at solutions or whatever it is, but you know, I'm in a, I'm in a good place to be marketed to. And then you've got the rest of them, which is seven, 70% who are completely unaware. Right? Yeah. And what I see a lot of people doing are they're going, they're trying to take people from unaware to buying immediately. Right. 
And if you can figure out, and, and this is the beauty about setting up your profile in the right way, is that if you can set that up in the right way, you're in you're, you're immediately going to be targeting those first two tiers. Yeah. Okay. But you're also going to open the door for the people underneath that they'd be like, wow, that's possible. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. And then you take them up the up the buying cycle. Yeah, you you make them problem aware and then you like plant, you know, it's it's almost like saying to like exactly. a jewelry store saying to somebody like, "Hey, do you want to buy an engagement ring?" Well, like I'm not even I'm not even I'm dating. 16. Yeah, I'm okay. 16. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the money uh, or the yeah. I'm not dating anybody. Like I'm super awkward. Um oh that may, maybe that was just me at 16. Um but <laughs> You know, so it's it's almost like the cold DMs are like that versus someone who yeah. uh, is has been dating a person for a year and a half or two years and they know that they want to, or however long, right? I'm just using my 100%. own personal experience. Um, but, and they're but it's ready. true. I yeah. mean, like, I still, I still get DMs. So check this out. I still get DMs today where people are like, hey, Matt, do you want to get more clients on LinkedIn? I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> You didn't even read my profile. All that right. they've done is they've taken an automation tool. They've kind of put in some broad targeting, put in a generic message, press play, and then forgot about it. And hopefully this is the throwing spaghetti, the meatballs, and the sauce on the wall at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't I, work. I got the same exact DM that was like, hey, Joe, uh, do you want help growing and monetizing your podcast through processes? And I'm like, did you just copy my biography line and and like paste it back to me like that what <laughs> yep so they're like we do it a happens. lot of research and i'm like do you research the people you're reaching out to because like mm -hmm. uh i do what you do and from what yeah. i can tell probably better <laughs> yeah so and if you know and if you're starting out then you're the one that's going to be doing the research right if you're right. the one that's responsible for it you do the research as you start growing and bringing in more money then you can buy back your time by hiring somebody to do that process for you. Right? right. As long as you build a process out of it that they can take over. This, this um, is, th I want to really drive this point home. Right. Because I've made this yes. mistake like multiple times where I would hire somebody and be like, just go do your thing. Right. And I am setting oh, no. that up, them up for failure because Absolutely. I don't know what I'm looking for. hundred um, percent. And it's because I didn't do it or try it first. So, and this is, yeah. you know, this is what, this is really what annoys me with, uh, you know, in the, in the LinkedIn space at the moment is that there's so many people out there that they'll say, cool, here's a process, here's a strategy. All you need to do is hire a VA and let them run it. Right. And, or they just go and hire a VA and they say, go get me leads on LinkedIn. Or these VAs are out there and they're just saying, hey, I can get you leads in, on LinkedIn. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't quite work like that, right? How are they going to understand your message, your positioning, your tone of voice. What do they say when people start responding? Like you've got to build those processes out first. And then once you know that it's working and it's repeatable, then you can hand it over to somebody and say, run this. Right. Right. Now, the cool thing is with today's day and age is that we've got a lot of tools available that, that make this part really easy. Right. So we use a combination of automation and AI. So the AI captures the voice, sounds like you, responds like you, and the automation gets the bulk of the work out there so that you can spend your time, you know, with people who are actually interested in, and they can drive things forward. But people don't do that initial hard work. They don't do the market research, right? So we take people through a process called the ask interview where they've got to go out is if they don't have the stuff dialed in. So there's different levels of, of clients that we work with. So if they don't have the stuff dialed in or they're at a place where I've got too many things and I don't know how to position myself, or I've got a couple of different businesses, we'll say to them, cool, you're going to go out and interview a bunch of potential clients, right? And even people who are on your leads list that maybe they've ghosted you, mm -hmm. right? Or haven't bought from you. You're going to go back and interview them and you're going to dive into their pains, their fears, their goals, desires. This is going to help us come up with a couple of things, your message, your positioning, what to offer them, what to sell them, right? Because we're either going to say, uh, you know, here's an offer, please buy it. Or we can find out what they want, what their pain points are, and just give them that, that they're willing to pay for. Yeah. But then also, every person that you do this with, right, a lot of them are going to be great potential clients, in which case they're going to turn around and ask, well, can you help me solve this problem? 
So yeah. now you've got leads coming in at the same time. Yeah. I, th- but that's the work most people don't want to do. Right. Because like research is hard or talking to people is hard. And I have an idea. And it since is. I thought of it, it's good, right? Um, I want to I wanna reference um, uh, an episode I did with uh, my friend uh, Becky Pearson Davidson called, uh, we did it on scrappy research. So uh, you can, that episode will be in the show notes along with everything we talked about here. I don't think I mentioned the show notes or the pro show at all. Um, so, um, but I, I want to keep the momentum going. So now you'll have to wait for that promo, yeah. but I do want to reference <laughs> Becky's episode here. Um, as well as the last business book I read before I, I declared like a moratorium on business books. Um, it was just like, uh, they all say the same thing. What was it? Uh, so the the last good one, I should say the last good one I read, right, was Forget the Funnel. Um, okay. It's really good, right? Because it talks about a lot of the things that you talked about. Um, mm. Claire and Gia are the authors. And they um, they basically go through like the importance of research and how it doesn't really take that many conversations to learn the language of your yeah. potential customer. Um, and so I think that was a, the, the book that made me stop reading business books was uh, not to not to call out anybody here, but um, like build a, building a small business, I think it was called, something like that. Okay. Uh, it's by Don Miller, right? And like Story Brand was a great book. I loved it. Oh, but, wow. yeah. you know, uh, that book was just very like generic, I feel. Mm. Um, so I was like, I all right. For his, you know, he's I, trying to reach, you know. Yeah, that, like I think it was, I've read, like all of the books I've read, uh, has given me everything I can, you know, I want, I should expand out beyond business books and maybe implement yeah. some of the things instead of reading more about it. So. Yeah. I, I feel honestly the same way. I, I got to a stage and everyone's like, Oh, this book was the greatest. And even like, you know, a hundred million dollar leads and you know, the, yeah. the Alex Hormozzi book and all of these things. And I downloaded and I start reading it and I'm like, yeah, it's like, I know all this stuff already. Um, yeah. and yeah, you know, people will tell you, you got to look for that one little nugget that can change the whole thing. I'm like, all right, that's cool. But I just struggle to get through them unless it's a really good story. Yeah, right. Right? Yes. You know, like the, I don't know if you've read like, you know, Pitch Anything and Flip the Script. Like Oren Claff is a really good storyteller. Okay. I'm and gonna, those were fun. I'm going to check those out. Yeah. But I'm doing a lot more like mindset and energy stuff because that stuff that you can bring into your content, that stuff you can bring into mm-hmm. your sales process because you get to a stage where there's only so many processes and systems you can put in place. Now you've got to level yourself up. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, and so uh, I've been reading more like fiction and biographies. Like I'm like working, it's like a slog because it's like it. 600 pages. Uh, but I'm reading Walter <laughs> Isaacson's uh, biography on Leonardo da Vinci. And Amazing. like he was, uh, da Vinci, everything he did 500 years ago is still like really uh, relevant today because he was like a quintessential interdisciplinarian, right? Like he was like an artist, but he also was really into science. Um, And the way he combined those two things made his work exceptional. And I think if you get into a habit of just reading the same books over and over again or consuming Mm -hmm. the same content over and over again, you're going to start to sound like everybody else and and you're not going to you're not going to be exceptional because you're not going to have a new perspective. There's a really good book that I think that you'd enjoy. I was just looking up the author now. Yeah. Um, it's called Power Versus Force by David R. Hawkins. Nice. All right. I'm gonna and he's got a whole series. Out. Right? But what it talks about is the different levels of consciousness in the world and what level of consciousness people are are the world is actually at and he actually defines it by numbers. And he's like, if you want to be able to move people through the different levels of consciousness, you've got to have different levels of communication with them and different words that you use. And you can actually then start bringing that into your marketing. Like we even started testing this out with, uh, you know, ChatGPT where, you know, we've built our persona and then we're like, all right, write an email with a consciousness score of uh, 900. Mm. And it changes it changes the entire communication. Wow, that's wild. We could have a whole other discussion on AI. Um, <laughs> totally. Because I'm like, I'm like AI suspicious, but I'm like, you know, I, I use it, but I don't think I leverage it the right way. And I've had a few conversations at the end of last year. Um, so I know we're, we're coming up on time. 
there we will there will be a pro show. First of all, there was a great pre-show uh, where I smack talk big creators. So if you ever want to hear me do that, um, but we also talk about like the importance of uh, and problem with oversimplification. So um, if you want to hear the pre-show, great. If you want to hear the pro show where we're going to talk about uh, how. Um, uh, Matt has been like traveling while running a business and how he's helped his business partner with three small kids also travel while running a business and a family. Uh, you can hear that in the pro show. You can become a member over at howibuilt.it slash join. You'll be able to join via Apple Podcasts, Substack, YouTube, or directly through my membership. So like whatever you're most com- whoever you're most comfortable giving money to, uh, you can find all those links over at howibuilt.it slash join. All right. So Matt, to close out here, um, let's give the listeners some actionable advice. If they want to uh, actually do LinkedIn the right way, if they don't want it to be their downfall, um, what, Mm -hmm. what are the first one to three things that they should do? Okay, perfect. And I love this question. So the first thing is make sure that your profile is targeted specifically to your ideal clients and that you're showing them how you can solve their unique problem in a unique way. Awesome. Okay. The second thing is you need to have a different approach. So you want to respect the sales process. We're about building connections and building the relationships. Now, how we do that is we use a combination of automation combined with AI. So the automation does the legwork. So you're not having to spend two to three hours a day on LinkedIn. And the AI captures your voice, which means that you can be running your marketing uh, processes on LinkedIn in 20 to 30 minutes a day and actually generate five to 10 high quality sales, uh, sales opportunities every single week. The third thing is if we're going and creating content, right? Do the market research, understand your clients on a deep level, figure out what is hurting them the most. So the content that you create, and we love creating uh, what we call, it it all kind of falls under what we call a LinkedIn micro funnel, right? So no fancy landing pages or anything. It can all be hosted on LinkedIn is create a lead magnet that shows them how they can solve this problem right? A simple one pager or two pager, but make it quality. And then the people that you're sending it out to, then you you create a a training that goes along with that, a short five, 10 minute video. It doesn't need to be super complicated or professional. You know, you don't have to overdo it on the editing and the production, but then walk them down a journey of figuring out, Hey, is this something amazing for you? And then the second thing is, here's a training. And then the third thing is, let's actually dive deeper into your business and have a conversation around that. Mm. Now, there's one more thing that I'll share. And if you don't know what your ideal clients want, or if you've got a couple of different things that you do and you're trying to figure out, well, what is the thing that I should represent myself as on LinkedIn? One of the simplest, fastest, and easiest ways to do that is by running a poll right? We love running polls. So to re-engage your, your, your database, because a lot of people have got connections from, you know, long ago, and they don't know who's in there or how engaged they are. Run a poll, ask three or four questions that are really targeted to your ideal clients. And then anyone that likes, comments, engages, or votes, you then open up a conversation with them, get them on a call, and figure out what are they actually dealing with. Mm. You know, every time we've done this, every time we want to launch a new offer into the marketplace, we're testing out new messages, we run polls, we get people on quick calls, and inevitably we pick up clients at the same time. So that's just like a really simple, straightforward way. This is what I need to focus on here, and this is how I can build this thing out. And it creates engagement that people are actually, it's a low it's a low barrier to engage, right? It makes it really simple to click and vote. Yeah. Um, And so two things to drive this point home is that something that Kathleen Selman's also said we should do is have polls on LinkedIn. But also in, in, you know, I like to research my guests a little bit before inviting them on. Um, 
Matt, when I was doing uh, research for him, had a poll on the 60, la- uh, 60 leads in 60 days guide. So uh, mm-hmm. practicing what he preaches here, right? Uh, so I think that's, it's funny that you you mentioned polls because I was literally right before we got on this call, like just reviewing that stuff. So I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, we, we practice what we preach. Yeah. Um, and we got to make sure that uh, these things are actually working and that our clients can use them. Uh, so that's, you know, we do it. We do it first. We get the bloody knuckles, broken bones, uh, and decide what we can actually take to the marketplace. That's yes. going to be relevant. You, you do the experiments and then you see what works. We <laughs> experiment on bring, ourselves. Yes, yes. Exactly. We experiment yes. on ourselves. <laughs> Love it. Bringing it back full circle. I have one follow-up before you tell people how you can find you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was right. That was all right. I said you a lot there. Um, <laughs> with the lead magnet, the LinkedIn uh, micro funnel, are you asking people to join your list to get this or is like following them on uh, your mailing list, I should say, um, or is like following you on LinkedIn and engaging with you on LinkedIn good enough? So we use a combination. So here's the cool thing with some of the tools that we're using right now Mm -hmm. is that if we're connecting with people on LinkedIn, we can also enrich that data by getting their email address and getting their phone number, which means that you can have an omni-channel conversation with them. Yeah. And so if we're saying, well, how do we do this? And, you know, it, it depends on the strategy. Like I would always recommend grow your email list. Mm hmm. Not everyone wants to join your email list though. Yeah. So when we have these conversations, we'll send it out and we'll say, hey, would you like this thing? All right, we've just created a a doc. Would you like it? I thought it would be super valuable for you. And if they say yes, then we actually open up the conversation there and say, all right, before I send this thing to you, mind if I ask you a couple of questions, you know, three questions on, you know, what you're doing in your business and where you're at. So now before I've even sent them the lead magnet, I've got a conversation going, Mm -hmm. right? And either they're going to be a good fit for what we're doing or not. If they are a good fit, then I'll say, cool, here's your lead magnet and I'll get them on a call with me. Okay. If they're not, I'll say, cool, or not right now or whatever it is. I'll say, no, that's no problem. Here's your lead magnet. We'll typically put it on a very simple landing page that they can opt in for. But I'm also not too sticky about that Mm -hmm. because... I want people on my email list that want to be there. Yeah, absolutely. I'd rather have people unsubscribe than not read it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm always, I always tell people I'm happy to see unsubscribes because it means that they don't care enough about what I'm saying. Like I'm sending useful, I'm not just like, hey, my dog died today or whatever. That was a really sad example. I don't have a dog. (laughs) Because he died. (laughs) Because he died. Um, You know, I had a sandwich for lunch today. That's a, that's way more benign. Um, (laughs) You know, I'm saying like useful stuff. So if they unsubscribe, then they're really not interested in in the stuff. So I'm always happy to see unsubscribes. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, this is this is great. Gosh, I, we can keep going, uh, but I want to again respect everybody's time. Maybe we'll have to do a follow up. And of course, we do have the pro show. If you want to hear that ad free extended version, uh, you can go to howibuilt.it/slash/join. Uh, but Matt, if people want to learn more about you, where can they find you? Awesome. And so the first place obviously is on LinkedIn. So my LinkedIn is Matt Clark Rainmaker. Uh, it's the same for Facebook, same for Instagram. And then our website is the virtual edge, right? Um, you'll see on my LinkedIn page, there's a link tree with some free resources that people can go and grab. But those are, if you go to LinkedIn, uh, Matt Clark Rainmaker. And if you go to my website, the virtual edge.com, those are the best places to find me. Perfect. And like I said, I will have all of those in the show notes uh, in whatever app you're listening to. You can also head over to uh, howibuilt.it slash 401. That's howibuilt.it slash 401. I don't think it was very unceremonious. I don't think I mentioned the episode number at all, but uh, we are in the 400s. Well and done. So, yeah. Thank well, you very much. Um, Matt, this was great. Thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Man, I've had so much fun and, you know, I think we, we got into things and, and into questions that people don't normally ask. So I appreciate uh, you doing that and, and having me on today. My pleasure. That is always my goal. So thank you so much for saying that. Thanks to our sponsors. And of course, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. And until next time, get out there and build something. <laughs>